Well, hello, folks. Welcome to another episode of Whiskey Calling. It's a Thursday night here. Um, dog days of winter, early March. Just hoping for you know. It looks like spring is slowly creeping up, which is which is nice. Um, so I thought, well, why not a better time to uh, do a little taste here? Um, you know, give you my thoughts on uh, on a couple whiskeys. We're, we're going to kind of do do the main one here. It's going to be a Brooks Lottie, um, the classic Lottie Scottish barley, the unpeated. Eiley Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Here it is. So um, yeah, kind of a kind of kind of a good memory on this one. Kind of uh, bought this one this last summer. We we're on vacation to Canmore, Alberta, and we found this uh, found this one and kind of enjoyed it. And uh, you know, enjoyed it on that vacation for sure. On our on our deck in our hotel room it was awesome. So. Uh, so yeah, I thought I'd uh, give this a pour and, and, t and let you know what my thoughts are. So I'm going to give this a cork. Ah, there we go. That. Uh, um, yeah, let's give this a pour here. So I hope you're uh, you have a dram yourself that you're enjoying, and uh, if you've got a Brooks Lotte, uh, uh, pour on yourself and uh, see if you. See if you agree with with some of my notes, or you know, if you have the same sort of feeling. Yeah, so it's kind of a kind of a cool color. This this thing is kind of the container is a really cool color. It's kind of a nice nice marketing. Um, it's um, it's fifty percent alcohol and it's unpeated, like I said. So it's kind of um, um, you know, I think Brooks Lottie can be quite peated, uh, you know, in other t situations. Um, yeah, you know, it says it's uh, says here it's signed here by Adam Hannett, head distiller, and it says it is our mission to pursue the ultimate pedigree, provenance, and traceability of our raw materials, chief of which is our barley, and to push boundaries of the concept of of I, I don't even know what that word is. Anyways, in artisanal single malt whiskey. So, anyways. Um, um, yeah, we're going to sort of give this a sip here. So this is kind of what it looks like. It's kind of a nice light color. I'm not too sure if it's uh, if it's um, naturally colored or not, but it is. It says distilled, matured, and bottled, unchilled, filtered, and coloring free, it does say. So that means it's, this is its natural color. Yeah, it's a nice, uh, nice kind of golden, light golden uh, look to it. Let's see what it smells like. You know, smelling it now, I mean, I've had this bottle. This bottle's probably, from the feel of it, it's hard to tell by looking in this bottle, but it feels like it's about half full still, or maybe a third full. And um, um, so, and I opened it up just this last summer, you know, so probably nine months ago, let's say. And I gotta say, I haven't I haven't had a sip of this for probably a couple months. And I gotta say, when I smell this, it's, 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 it's got a real, uh, uh, more noticeable nose than I remember. It is kind of a very, uh, a little bit of a, a kind of, um, I, I, I don't know if I'm describing this right, but kind of almost a, gra a kind of a, a weedy, like I get that with, with scotches sometimes, almost a weedy smell. Um, that's what it smells like to me anyways, but it's kind of got that strong in a really pleasant way. I, I, I got to say, I'm really enjoying this nose right now. You know, I think maybe smell a little bit of the alcohol too. You know, it's 50% uh, alcohol. So I, I kind of smell a little bit of that too. It, it, again, in a good way. Yeah. Okay, well, let's, let's give it a taste and see what it, see what it tastes like. Okay, I'm getting kind of a, you know, just sort of a nice soft kind of taste that kind of matches the nose at the beginning with a little bit of a nice push of hot alcohol halfway through in a really good way. And kind of a nice flowing kind of finish here. Kind of a nice, 
a little bump near the end of the finish in terms of it gets a little hotter but then kind of settles in it's got a I got a nice aftertaste you know I gotta say um, gotta say as I've opened this bottle when I first tried it um, I, I thought it tasted maybe a little bit um, flat's not the word but a little bit bland uh, didn't have a lot of punch to it I thought but as I've I don't know if it's just just me or the bottle but as I've let the bottle sit over a little bit of time it's really kind of every time I, I go back to it I like it more and more it seems to have a little bit more of a punch to it um, in a really positive way and, and that's exactly what happened again here I haven't had it for about two months probably and boy it, 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 it has a stronger richer more complex taste than I remembered Let's try it again. Yeah, it's a, just a really nice, oh, really nice sort of repeat again of what I just said. Just kind of right in the middle there. It just kind of has a nice, a nice hot alcohol uptake in a very nice way. And just has that throughout has kind of that I don't know if this is the best way to describe it, just a weedy taste to it in a best possible way I, I just feel like I'm sitting in some wheat fields and just sort of you know soaking up the smell and the taste of uh, of wheat uh, you know I, again that's you know it's probably a terrible description I, it's just, but it's just what I taste and, and I get that with scotches sometimes especially the ones that are not peated and I really like it I really like that uh, about scotch one more sip here. Yeah, that is really, really, really nice. It's amazing to me. I mean, um, it'll be interesting when I when I get down to uh, the empty bottle um, top 10 rankings of, of you know when I get to another 10 empty bottles and I kind of rank those bottles I did one video of that earlier this earlier uh, not too long ago and I'm gonna kind of keep doing that I think whichever uh, sample of 10 this ends up here is gonna be very interesting where it ends up because as I keep drinking it it just gets better and better and better and better my first impression of it it was a really really great scene and we were sitting in a hotel room uh, on our deck overlooking a pool and beautiful mountains. And and um, I remember being a little bit underwhelmed with this particular scotch. It just tasted a little bit a little bit um, bland, like I said. But as I've gone on over time, boy, has it ever sort of picked up. And I don't know if it's kind of woken up in the bottle or if, or if it's just my palate has changed a little bit. Um, I'm not sure. You know, but but it's, it's, it's really, really nice. I'd really give this a, give this quite a high ranking right now. I mean, um, you know, it's a really really nice uh, scotch. So I definitely recommend it without without a doubt. But I thought I'd compare it to something kind of similar in a way, mm -hmm. um, and that, that that's Ardbeg Ten here. Um, so I thought I'd compare it to that. Now this Ardbeg Ten, of course, is of course is peated this one is unpeated so it's not exactly the same but the reason I picked this Ardbeg 10 is it's um, I mean of course Ardbeg 10 is very very classic you know um, but I picked it because I guess the Ardbeg 10 was another one that I found a little bit um, when I first tried it um, I remember feeling maybe a little bit underwhelmed uh, you know Maybe my expectations it would be taste more peaty or more something, but then as I've kind of worked into this bottle, uh, it's kind of been a nice surprise. Every time I have it, I like it a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Ardbeg Yugendale is probably one of my favorite scotches I've ever tried, and I, I sometimes found the ten a little bit underwhelming or just a little bit uh, not enough punch maybe to it at times. So I thought I'd kind of try this one alongside this one. They're, they're both. Uh, they're both Isle Scotches, I believe. I should know that, but um, yeah, yeah. This is so they're both Isle Scotches. You know, one's peated, one isn't. But I, I kind of remember the textures of them kind of being kind of similar. 
Um, they, they're not really, really, really creamy textures. Uh, you know, they, you know, they're relatively light. You see this one too. It's a fairly light looking, kind of similar color. Um, and this one here, non-chill filtered um, as well. Um, I don't know if it says anything about the coloring or not, but it's pretty, pretty light as it is. So anyways, this one kind of has a kind of similar texture to it. So I thought I'd kind of contrast this one and uh, kind of go back and forth a little bit and, and kind of give you my thoughts on this one as well. So, so cheers. I hope you've got a drama yourself. Uh, hope you got a couple of scotches that, that you're trying as well or anything, any, any whiskey um, and enjoying it here on this Thursday night. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what this smells like. Yeah, so, you know, definitely pick up the peat right away, of course. But I got to say, you know, it, yeah, I guess I guess I had that in my mind. These two scotches have a feeling like if this was peated or this wasn't, they'd be quite similar, you know. And I'm kind of picking that up on the nose a little bit. They kind of remind me of each other a little bit in that way. So let's have a sip and uh, see what this one's like. Mm. Mm. Hmm. Interesting. So this hard big, yeah, you definitely pick up the peat right away, uh, you know, on the palate. But it's got a little bit, it's actually, interestingly enough, it got a bit of a richer, it, it tastes richer, the texture is richer than, than, than the Brooks Lottie, I would say. Um, which kind of surprises me. I mean, I actually had some Ardbeg at Yugendale earlier tonight, which I really love. And that's a really rich, thick texture. And I always found Ardbeg 10 as a comparison, as being just maybe a little bit, uh, uh, you know, a, a little bit of a, of a light, very light texture, but boy, I'm, I'm picking up some surprisingly, you know, more texture to this. Hmm. Yeah, so this, uh, you know, again, the peat, some texture, but it's got some nice heat and almost a little bit of spice on the back end in, in, in a really nice, nice way. And it just kind of settles, it settles, you know, on the, on the, uh, on the finish. Hmm. It's really nice, actually. Really, really nice. Of course, hard bake. Hard bake is hard bake. Art big is amazing, you know, but yeah, these two to me kind of remind me of each other a little bit. It's interesting how this one's got a little more texture. You know, I'm going to go back to, I should have grabbed it, had a glass of water here to kind of clean the palate in the middle, but let me go back to this and yeah, so now, you know, it's funny. Now, now you go back to the nose on this one. It's kind of got almost a, can I say almost a vinegary, uh, almost a little bit, uh, a vinegar almost smell to it compared to the Art Bay 10. Again, not in a bad way at all. Like kind of a, but a nice contract, a contrast, a nice variety compared to the other one. Let's uh, take a sip of this one again. Hmm. You know what? Yeah, you know, again, again, that, that kind of a, almost a bit of a, I don't want to say floral, but, but almost kind of a, a bit more of a vinegary touch to it compared to the art bake. And that could just be going back maybe to peated, unpeated kind of thing. But, but it's got a really nice sort of, um, again, it just settles nice. Settles nice. The more I've had this, like, you know, kind of the, when I, kind of my, my middle tries of this so far have been a very relaxing, easygoing, um, not trying too hard at all kind of, kind of scotch. 
um, you know, it, and that's in a really, really good way. And, I, and I'm finding that again here. You don't have to, it's just telling you when you take a sip, just relax. Don't try too hard, just enjoy it, you know. Um, and, and I got to say that that's coming through again here, um, big time. Yeah, so, you know, in this tasting, you know, I, I haven't really gotten into giving lots of rankings necessarily, but, uh, you know, I might put this Brooks Lottie at, at about a 79%, let's say. Um, you know, so it, it, it's it's pretty solid, but I, you know, I feel like, and it's going to be interesting. I mean, remember what I said here on the 79% at this point. I bet you by the time I finish this bottle and, and I'm going down to the uh, the rankings on the finished bottles, I bet you this ranks high, and I bet you it's going to be a higher number. I bet you it's going to be 85 or something. So, 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 so that's, that's, it's kind of an interesting, kind of fun thing. So, you know, anyways, I, I might do a, a full review on the Ardbeg 10 on its own as sort of the as sort of the main feature, and then I'll maybe look at trying to come up with a with a number for that one. But, but, but overall, yes, Brooks Lottie, it is nice. It's a nice buy. It's a cool bottle as well. Uh, but it's very relaxing. I kind of feel like it's it's a nice scotch you could drink any time of the year. Summertime it's light and kind of easy. Wintertime it's got enough heat and spice it just kind of kind of flows in. So, so yeah, I, I would say it's really nice. Um, you know for sure. So it's definitely it's definitely worth a shot to, to enjoy it. Um, hey, I hope you guys uh, have a great Thursday night. Um, weekend's coming up. Hope you enjoy the weekend. Uh, maybe I'll find some time if the weather's nice to throw, out, throw up another video this weekend. But uh, overall, have a great night and thanks, thanks a lot, folks.